In the southwest of Finland, you will find the Oland Archipelago. This is an archipelago of thousands of rocky islands. However, if you look carefully at these islands, you will notice some interesting geologic features. The features that stood out to me when I first saw this area were these two strange ring features near the small settlements of Ova and Masala. My immediate thought were that these ring features were simply impact craters. I mean, they have the typical shape of an impact crater, with the central basin and the outer higher rings. However, these features are actually not impact craters at all and are something way more interesting geologically. So in today's video, let's discuss how these ring features and how other features within the Oland Archipelago formed. So the first step in creating these ring features is an uplift known as the Sphecophenian orogeny. And this orogeny took place all the way back 1.92 to 1.76 billion years ago. This is a very ancient orogeny. Before the Sphecophenian orogeny took place, we had the supercontinent of Loroscandia. This was, as the name would suggest, a combination of parts of Laurentia, or parts of modern-day North America, and Scandinavia. Specifically, it was comprised of some cratons that are still around even today. Cratons are very old but stable sections of crust. Think the Canadian Shield. However, in our region, we had the Corellian Craton, a 2-3 to three billion year old Craton comprised of granite and greenstone. However, starting around 1.9 billion years ago, things would change. This supercontinent began rifting apart. What this did is create two different subduction zones. It created the Torn Gap Mountains of Labrador, Canada that are still around but heavily eroded today, and it also created our Sphecophenian orogeny. This Sphecophenian orogeny is what is known as an accretionary orogeny. The process of accretion sees crust breaking off the oceanic plate, and that crust then being added to the continental plate. And what this does is add a lot of new material to the old continental crust. This is exactly what happened in the Sphecophenian orogeny. During this orogeny, we saw several different volcanic arcs and microcontinents collide with the Corellian Craton and then be accreted onto it. What this did is greatly expand the continental crust off of the Corellian Craton and it also greatly thickened the crust to around 65 kilometers. For context, the average continental crust is around 35 to 40 kilometers. As this material was breaking off of the volcanic arcs and microcontinents, it would get metamorphized, and it would become the underlying country rock or the native rock to the area, specifically gneiss. However, it wasn't this orogeny which formed our circular features. Instead, it was post-orogenic processes. After the orogeny from around 1.81 to 1.77 billion years ago, we saw the crust extending instead of thickening. This extension created a period of magmatism. It is this magmatism which formed many of these features in southern Finland and the Oland Islands. However, there are actually two different processes which have formed different rings. This first period of magmatism created 14 of these ring features, which spans across a lot of southern Finland, not just the Oland Archipelago. So what actually are these features? Well, they are known as igneous intrusions. An igneous intrusion, also known as a pluton, is when magma intrudes on weaknesses within rocks and then solidifies. What this does is create regions within the older rock of newer igneous rock. And there are a variety of different types of igneous intrusions, such as batholith intrusions, stock intrusions, and dike intrusions. In the case of these ring formations, they are known as ring dike intrusions. These ring dike intrusions are directly created by the collapsing of a volcano into a caldera, also known as cauldron collapse. A cauldron collapse is caused when the magma chamber of a volcano empties out after an eruption. This causes a block called the roof block to fall down into the magma chamber. 
and the magma that is in the chamber will usually go back up through the ring fault where the roof block fell, and eventually it might even reach the caldera, filling it up and forming a lava lake. So let's take a look at a specific example of ring dike creation in one of our Oland intrusions. This is the Ova intrusion, and it is definitely the most obvious intrusion within this Oland archipelago. So in the case of our Ova intrusion, we have a nearly vertical, but slightly inward dipping roof block. Now this roof block did not stay in one piece. Instead, it broke apart in a process called stoping, where magma intrudes into cracks within the roof blocks and breaks it apart into several different pieces. This stoping of the roof blocks is the reason why these islands are irregular. We have some sections of the ring which are wider than the other sections, and this is just because this is an area where the magma was able to intrude more easily into the ring structure, mainly due to stoping. Across southern Finland, and even dipping into Russia, there are 13 more of these igneous intrusions. So let's quickly take a look at where some of these are located. So to the southwest of our Ova igneous intrusion, we find the Sigling igneous intrusion. And while it is harder to spot, it actually becomes obvious if you see the circle that it forms. And this is much smaller, and as you can see, it forms less of a ring pattern and more of a filled circle. There are two more of these igneous intrusions within the Oland Archipelago, however they are not visible today. The final 11 are found in southeastern Finland and Russia around Lake Ladoga. But you may have noticed that I haven't even mentioned the Masala igneous intrusion, one of the two that I pointed out right at the start of this video. So why is that? Well, it is because it formed in a completely different magmatism to the 14 I just mentioned. In fact, it formed more than 200 million years later. This period is known as the Rapakivi granite magmatism, and it lasted from 1.65 to 1.47 billion years ago. This magmatism saw the creation of Rapakivi granite batholiths. Rapakivi granite is granite which is characterized by its very large crystals, due to it cooling very slowly. And a batholith is another type of igneous intrusion. Batholith is commonly associated with being at the bottom of these diagrams near the lower crust, but that's just because igneous intrusions are classified commonly by their size. And batholith is the largest size, where they have to be more than 100 kilometers. So while they're commonly showed at the bottom because that's where you'll find the most magma, in the case of southern Finland here, we would find this batholith very close to the surface. In fact, it got as close as 3 kilometers to the surface. This created very large regions of batholith. The areas you see in white on this map are the Rapakivi batholith. So as you can see, it is found in four different formations, with two of these formations being in the Oland Islands. One of these batholith intrusions formed Oland Island itself. And by the way, if you're wondering what this somewhat circular lake is, this is actually an impact structure. And the other regions of batholith formed this Masala ring, and also the Vima batholith, this circular region here. This Vima batholith is very interesting, because it formed in the same cauldron collapse process that I mentioned for the Ova intrusion. This means that there was a volcanic roof block that was almost 15 miles wide, that sunk down into the magma, and over top of this roof block, the magma would slowly seep in and fill the area. And I just think that it is very cool that this Vima intrusion, which I didn't even notice at first, formed in the same process as our Ova intrusion. But this does bring us to the Masala ring. And again, this formed in the same way as Ova and Vima, where the caldera collapsed and magma filled the edges. So that is how all these ring features formed within the Oland Islands. But of course, we're not done yet, because we need the last step which is erosion. Through a combination of 1 billion years of water, wind, but primarily glacial erosion, these igneous intrusions have been exposed to the surface. Since the Vima igneous intrusion is 200 million years younger, the surface has only been eroded down to where the magma filled above the central block. 
However, in the case of our ova and masala igneous intrusions, this present surface line would be further down, revealing the central roof block, which as I mentioned previously, is made of weaker gneiss. This central block of gneiss eroded more easily, and left this basin filled with water surrounded by the island rings that we see today. So that is how these igneous intrusions have formed in the Oland Archipelago. Along with this video, I will have an accompanying short explaining why there are these weird lines dividing the islands. So check that out after this video if you haven't seen it already. But I will see you guys in the next one.